We met Mark Irwin in his Danville studio where he has been sculpting wood since 1995. He opened the studio several years after graduating with an art degree, but hadn't quite settled on what he wanted to make. After meeting a wood sculptor and learning the basics of the craft, Irwin knew he'd found his calling. Each of his sculptures is a single piece of wood. He prefers crotch pieces as they have more interesting features and characteristics. He's used several different types of wood, including beech, black walnut, cherry, and soft maple. Though truthfully, cherry and maple are a bit easier to carve than the burled woods. The first step in the sculpting process is to debark the wood, remove any insects, and clean out areas that have been damaged. As wood dries, it will split, or check. Clearing out the checks and insect damage reveals the characteristics of the wood, and then the real creative work begins. Once I see what I have, then I start getting ideas of what's what, what's in the piece and you know each piece has has something in each piece of wood has something really remarkable in it it's my job to find out what that is it's any any wood sculptor's job to find out what that is and you give this to another wood sculptor and they're going to find something entirely different this is just what i find in the wood most of the sculpting is done by hand though he does occasionally use power tools Many different types of gouges and rasps, along with mallets, are the primary tools of the trade. Sandpaper, too, is frequently used in the sculpting process. Necessity is, as they say, the mother of invention, and Irwin has developed his own techniques over the years. I don't see how anyone can carve wood and do this kind of work and not develop their own techniques. You have to. And, and I borrow less and less from the, some of the techniques that I learned from the original guy and because I've come up with my own way of doing things that work better for me. Um, and, you know, I got a good start with them, but I basically it's a self-taught sort of thing. What is so intriguing about Irwin's pieces is that while they are made of wood, which is hard, there is a softness to the work. Curves and twists and bends that seem to defy the nature of the medium. Since his work is abstract art, I asked Mark how he knows when a piece is complete. If I can see a piece that's completely harmonious and its line and its rhythm and the, the, everything relates properly, I mean, because it's all about movement and rhythm and harmony and flow, and if at the end of the, the time I've been carving it that I see all of those elements come together, um, that's, that's when it's done. Once a piece is complete, it's ready to be finished. Irwin's finishes are as much an artistic endeavor as creating the sculpture itself. Several years ago, he took a class in York that was designed to teach cabinet makers and furniture restorers how to use different types of shellac. Irwin showed up with one of his pieces and set to work applying these techniques to fine art. Since I knew nothing about shellac, Mark gave me a quick lesson. In the Indian subcontinent, there are acacia trees that grow, and there's a certain specific type of bug, a true bug. Um, okay. yeah, I studied entomology, so I, <laughs> I make the distinction there. There's a certain type of bug, it's called the lac insect, and um, what they do is they're twice a year, it's a cyclic thing where the, the females and males will come in and feed on these groves of acacia trees, and then, the, then they will mate, and the female will then lay eggs and as feeding on the sap of these acacia trees and then will exude this this stuff and will encase itself and its eggs in this shellac excrete so it excretes this over it and so the branches are literally covered mm -hmm. with this and then the the eggs will hatch and the the larvae will will actually eat their way out of the shellac and then metamorphose and fly away and then they'll come back and repeat the whole procedure. So once they've all hatched and flown away, the workers in the, the shellac industry will come in and they literally peel this stuff off the trees. It doesn't hurt the tree. And then the insects will come back, you know, whenever they come back again twice a year and do it all over again. Some of the shellac is processed into discs while others are in their raw form. These are dissolved into a solution with denatured alcohol and then Irwin brushes them on to the sculpture using techniques he has developed. Many, many, many layers of shellac can be applied and, unlike other finishes, the layers bond together to form a single shell on each piece. 
Erwin is always ready to try something new and has been working at a forge to create steel pieces to incorporate into this piece, whose working title is C-Form. Currently, Erwin is creating a body of work for a one-person show. No small task, considering thousands of hours of work go into each piece, and Mark still has a day job. He has been part of shows in Toronto, at Susquehanna University, and the State Show in Harrisburg. He has pieces on display right now at Impressions Gallery on Mill Street in Danville. Oh, and I should mention that a couple of the beer taps at the Old Forge Brewery are Mark's creations as well. As we finished up our visit to his studio, we talked about an artist's calling and the differing ideas of success in the art world. I'm doing something that makes me happy and that I find fulfilling and visually pleasing. It's to try and have, let other people experience, at least vicariously, if not in, other, in any other way, the same kind of joy that I get in, this, in doing this work. I want people to experience by looking at it. So I consider myself to be successful when anybody can walk in off the street into the gallery downstairs and look at that work and that, never look at artwork and say, that's really beautiful. That, Somehow that, that's got something there. I don't care if they say it looks like a saddle or if they say it looks like this or that. If they're responding to it in a very positive way and it makes them look at artwork in a serious way and it connects with them, I've been 100% successful. My, my goal overall is to make abstract art as approachable to everyone as possible. Coming up next, I'm going to learn how to kayak. In Your Neighborhood with Jennifer Wakeman will introduce you to the people, businesses, and locations that make this area great. No matter where you live, Jennifer will be in your neighborhood with stories that interest you. Tune in Wednesday nights at 7 and Saturday and Sunday afternoons at 1 for In Your Neighborhood with Jennifer Wakeman exclusively on CATV Channel 8.